Hello and welcome to the episode 355 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Some of the highlights of this episode include a warm-up for the Beatles' Christmas show, more recording on two iconic songs from the Sgt. Pepper era, and a lunch party for the Magical Mystery Tour film. On the 21st of December 1961, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums, performed another lunchtime concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, their third in four days. By this time, one could argue, the club had become a second home in Liverpool for the lads. One year later, in 1962, the Beatles performed at the Star Club for the continuation of the fifth and final residence in Hamburg, West Germany. By this time, the band had acquired its definitive lineup, with Ringo Starr on drums. Another live occasion in 1963. The Beatles performed at the Gaumont Cinema in Bradford for the first of two concert only presentations of their The Beatles Christmas Show, an elaborate show with costumes, music, comedy, and pantomime, created and presented by Brian Epstein. Apart from the Beatles, the show featured the Baron Knights and Duke de Monde, Tommy Quickly, the foremost, Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas, Cilla Black, and Rolf Harris. The Beatles performed Roll Over Beethoven, All My Loving, This Boy, I Wanna Be Your Man, She Loves You, Till There Was You, I Want To Hold Your Hand, Money, That's What I Want, and Twist and Shout, exactly the repertoire of their show. See episode 358 for that. Talking about Christmas variety shows, on the 21st of December 1964, the four were busy with the rehearsals for the forthcoming Another Beatles Christmas Show production at the Audion Cinema in London. The show was basically an updated version of the 1963 idea. We'll also cover the details of that production in episode 358. 1966. The Beatles returned to the EMI Studios in London for a 7 to 11.45 pm session. During its first part, until 9 pm, When I'm 64 was enriched by the sound of two clarinets, played by Robert Burns and Harry McKenzie, and one bass clarinet, played by Frank Ridey scored by producer George Martin. Then, between 9 and 10 pm, the song was mixed into mono to produce an acetate for the band to listen to at home. Finally, from 10 to the end of the session, John Lennon re-recorded his lead vocals and an extra piano track onto track 26 of Strawberry Fields Forever. Party time in 1967, with the Beatles holding the lunch party for the premiere of Magical Mystery Tour. The film was to be aired on the 26th of December on BBC. It was a costume party with crew and staff from the film production and friends and relatives of the Fabs, all invited to share the fun at the Royal Lancaster Hotel in London. Rumor has it that there will be an end of production party for this podcast too. With its natural end approaching, you must help me with some donation. Otherwise, what will the guests say when I'll offer them cider instead of Moet? All jokes aside, even if this podcast is approaching its end, you can still visit www.simonmas.com support to see how you can contribute both financially or otherwise to the growth of the community I have started to create. Even if you listen to these episodes years down the line, rest assured that there will be some interesting music-related project that needs your love. Completely optional, of course, but 100% appreciated. Thank you for anything you will want to do. Let's wrap up the episode with the 21st of December 1969 session engineer Glyn Johns had at the Olympic Sound Studios. It was the second session for the remake of the mixing of Get Back, after the one on the 15th of December, 
see episode 349 for that. Unfortunately, nothing about the session is known, apart from the fact that Johns worked on the premises between 2 and 4 pm. What is known is that tomorrow we will have another episode, still focusing on all the things happened to the Beatles during their career. Join me if you can. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.